boom, 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 boom. And when the heart would stop beating, or the drum. Uh huh. Which is why women, if you go with a female, they know when to hide their heads. Yeah. For the, the gross parts. Yeah, same with that. But they, 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 the Bulgarians, the particular thing, you know, this time they kept the premonitions of death. They did it straight because they got a different set of actors. Which is funny, the actors are getting better, and the movies are getting worse. Well, because basically, okay, what do I have to do? Well, you have to do everything wrong and you die as a result of it and you get paid for doing it. And then it makes lots of money in ancillary sales, which means if you have a back-end profit thing, you don't have to worry about we're making your house payment next year. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But they're guaranteed money machines. This is a money machine. It's not... Um, part of, here's part of it is when you have a franchise that's been successful, just like on um, the one with with Mila Jovovich. It's like, it's hard not to continue to do the franchise because you've already got a built an audience that you know will come and see it. So, you know, it's like one of those things that's like, you're not going to make a huge amount of money, yeah. but you're all going to continue to work. Yeah. The franchise continues, and every time you build another one, yeah. what happens is, then you have new DVD releases and of all can, the other ones, they and they can, can put them all together. together. It's just like um, it all builds. The, and here's a complaint too about Di La Di La Cristo. Di La Cristo mm -hmm. is a uh, Nicholas Di La Cristo. Oh, that, of course, right, yeah. But the, um, the the big complaint is that he's rather a bland person. Yeah, that's the character he's playing is a bland person because he's definitely not that way. He's a bubbling, basically, it's one of the, oh, 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 type when you're interviewing. Oh, oh, and then, you know, like he, rem oh, I remember something. Mm -hmm. he's, just, he's wound up about everything he does, totally wound up. And he's, he's an ungodly athlete, too. Oh, yeah, because if you saw him and fired up with Eric Christensen. Oh, he's doing, you know, he It's did. like they were doing all those flips and everything. Yeah, you know, they're playing a couple of cheerleaders. They figured out it's a way to get the girl. Of course, both of them are in their 30s and playing high school kids. But, and one of them is about six foot, mm, and, you know, that, that's Eric Christensen. But um, then Christensen based, and, and Nick was, you know, falling off of belt, belt and stuff, stuff. But he's very athletic. He'd basically almost be a stuntman. Oh, but, you know what? I never thought of it. He probably could have been. So, you know, it, it, it's just like these are roles. Um, okay. Um, what In my day, era, you had a set of people that would appear in these things all the time. It would be like Lyle Talbot, um, Douglas Foley, uh, Regis Toomey. Women would be Ann Dorvac. Uh, you know, uh, basically you'd have a whole bunch of men and women that would basically, they'd filter from our... Uh, Kenneth Toby, for instance, from the thing was in a lot of things like this, and we, we talked. I really did a lot of bad sci-fi stuff when I was younger. Really bad sci-fi stuff. This looks classy compared to some of the stuff. I oh. Did. I did Ed Wood's caliber stuff when I was. You did. Yeah, they were so bad they didn't even get on the bad list. It's those movies that people do that they forget they ever did them, but they do them for money. Well, you know, I think these, these guys continue to do the franchise because, number one, it keeps you employed. But they're really just, you know, they're suspenseful fun. Yeah. Right? And basically, um, they're, they're, you know, they're talking about um, that basically, the, the, you know, most, like I said, the complaints mostly is because the big complaint that people have, there's two complaints with 3D which basically show up in this, this production, which is the god-awful glasses. And the second is back-ended production. Oh, I'm going to tell you, the glasses aren't going to get any better. And they're going to... No, they're still going to include them. They're going to include them, but, um, but they don't, you don't even have to have glasses if you don't, because there are ways of not having glasses, but, but you know, that's for another of, thing. Part of it is, is this franchise, I mean, they did Final Destination 4 and 3 and Final Destination 5 and 3, yeah, right? Because so, it I mean, that's kind of... It brings in an extra five minimum of five dollars per ticket. You figure we're going to work it this way. They know they got X amount of people that are going to come see this franchise. It's just they're already planning. I mean, they already got the the listing for Mila Jolovich's, You know, getting the the thing. You know, for uh, uh, Resident Evil. I mean, they're they're also working right now. As far as I understand, they're working on another Alien movie. Which they, you know, that's a great movie. She was in Avatar. She's got to be the next Avatar. She's still in pretty good shape for sixty-two. I know, so Gurney Weaver. So Gurney yeah. Weaver and Aliens again, folks. You know, old Ripley is coming back out again because, you know, she's shown that you can be an older woman and still compete 
like you did 30 years ago. I mean, she was not a kid when she did the first Alien movie. She was a full-grown woman. But, um, then, you know, these things are gold. I figure, you know, like they got maybe, uh, they, they, get, uh, they got like a million fans. Mm -hmm. A million fans that, uh, you know, uh, expect $20 a ticket. That's 15, that's 15 million right there. Mm -hmm. And then they've got those that are the hardcore fans. Then they got the other fans that maybe want to drift in. So they probably got maybe, they got enough yeah. fans that if you tack on $5 up extra per ticket, that this movie could make uh, $7,500 million. Yeah, but this is a movie where you could have people that go in and see the 2D version, the 3D version, the IMAX yeah. version. They'll have because all it versions. does have a loyal base of people. And they'll, they'll want to see, here's the trick is, these movies, if you have a loyal base of, say, one to five million people, they'll go to see the movie three or four times. Mm -hmm. They will see it. And then they'll buy it on 3D also, or, or they'll buy it on DVD also. Because we did, we actually have seen uh, Pirates of the Caribbean in all the format. <laughs> and it does look, it, it really looks bad. It, 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 they, it, go see IMAX. If, you know, go see IMAX. It is. It's, it's. It doesn't cost you that much more, and the seats are better, and there's less people in the theater. Go see IMAX. Yeah. If you got a shot. That's one of the things. Yeah. If you have a chance to go see it, go see it that way. Yeah. And basically, everybody turns out an IMAX version because it's nothing more than optics. Well, you know, this is one of those movies that I think is better to see in the theater than out of the theater. It's not. I look, you, you can see it in your big screen at home, but there's something about seeing. No, I, 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 I have screen. a great big Sony Trinitron that I watch. Mm -hmm. Big thing, you know, like 36 inches, which is really a huge TV set. It really looks crap. Destination in 3D really looked crappy on that set. The only thing that made it look good is when I put my put my 3D glasses on. It's and just it, one bigger is better. Yeah, it's bigger and better. It's just, um, uh, they, um, it's just like, uh, here's the problem is, is when they do a movie that they do, they know it's going to do it in 3D, they'll do things that don't look as well in 2D as they do on 3D when you back room it. Mm -hmm. And that you, it shows up. I mean, like they said, Transformers is going to look horrible in 2D. I mean, I already heard the reviews. It does not look good. And they told people, go see the 3D version as bad as it is because it doesn't look good. The effects not, but basically what happens is everything goes off the screen. And, and you know, like I said, but this, this movie is based upon the worst possible element that they, I was taught from the time I was about this tall that anti-climaxes are horrible. This, that, this one's got that, tons of them. It's, it's, it's a whole movie based on the anti-climax. But it's a suspenseful, supernatural movie. But, That's what it's supposed but to be. It's, it's just like that. <gasps> you, you, you know, uh, uh, here's a good one too. If you're a guy and you're taking the girl, I swear they tell you don't take girls to this type of movies. Guys always take girls. They always do because they want the girl to clutch on them and hold yeah, them. Yeah, because what happens is the guy will know what's coming up and he said, oh, they're getting ready to slice the guy's head off or they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna blow his head apart with a you know like it's a cassava melon. She says, oh no. And then you got mm, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no smile on the face. But um, So you're thinking this is a date movie? It's actually a date movie. Same as the the Friday the thirteenth movies. They had lots of couples going to them because the girl, oh, and mm -hmm. the girl look over in you know, their little eyes. What happened? Them. What happened? What happened? You know. And then they said, "Well, you, do you really want me to tell you?" She said, "No, no, no." You know. And the girls are the girls know what's going on too, folks, because it's a good way to be able to go, you know, jump a guy that you can't get away with doing that under normal circumstances. But uh, guys still take girls to movies for reasons. Mm -hmm. Back in my day, though, we did have uh, balcony seats where you could go sit in. <laughs> well, I mean, they'd rather take them to a movie like this than a uh, romantic comedy. I'm sure. Oh, God, they'd not go watch The Change. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like you're going to go on a date movie to go see The Help. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, the, the date movie is uh, basically, is an, uh, the Help is an older skewing movie. This is a younger skewing audience, which is growing older, which is the, the weird part about it is that the audience, like the, it's like Harry Potter because the kids started seeing them from when they were little and yeah. then the, the, the actors grow up with the audience. Yeah, it's just, I, I remember reading, you know, Richard Harris said that, uh, that I'll never live long enough to see these children grow into adults, but the audience will and the audience will grow with them. 
and the audience has grown. This was basically, I'm figuring high school, college kids when these things started. Mm -hmm. Because look at the people in the movies are not not a spring chick's age and not my age because they're, they're you know what happens is somebody my age get whacked? I think, I think Tommy Todd is in this one too. Did they whack him off according to age? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't remember if I saw Tony Todd or not. Go to the credits. Um, um, Molly Way, Jacqueline Courtney. Yeah, there's Tony Todd. Tony Todd basically was also, he, he's done a whole series of uh, movies where he's, he's played, you know, really, he's a big muscular gentleman. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bald headed. He plays a lot of these eerie parts. But you figure right out the bat, Tony Todd is in the movie. What? It's an it's a action movie with lots of scary elements. Ooh. That's what he does, but uh, he's a good actor. Ooh. You pick out some of the people, they try to pick out people like Courtney Vance, um, basically. Barclay Hope, okay, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I can tell you no matter what they say, I, I, you know, I've gone down, I've seen the thing, but I go down the cast list and I'll tell you it's, in the, it's a Canadian movie. Oh, because the actors involved. Because the actors and the involved. And the way it looks. Well, here's one of it. It's like, if you haven't seen the other ones, you see this when you fall in love with it, then you can go back and see all the other ones, too. Yeah, but it's, so, uh, it, it's, meant, it's meant to make you go see what happened, because... Uh, well, because people do that. They, it's like they fall in love with a movie or um, fall in love with a show, then they want more of it, right? We, so do you do have it's more It's just of it. like, these are our version, of the, the, the 21st century version of serials. When I was younger, See, we crappy things with Buck Rogers. I, mean, I, I actually saw John Wayne, some John Wayne serials. And I, where John Wayne is playing, uh, he's playing a French Foreign Legion pilot. And him and his, his, his he, he took his uh, mechanic with him all the time when he's fighting the Muslim. Actually, he'd take your mechanic in the back seat. But he'd be crashing his airplane. He would be, you know, he'd be a lot of crashing his airplane, going off a cliff, going right into the building. And, and then the airplane would be attacked the next picture. You know, mm -hmm. or, and, you know, or like the guy rides his horse, you know, you know, uh, uh, people don't even know who Red Rider is, but basically he was a man a bit big in my career too. He would ride his horse off of the cliff. And you know, you know, you see the picture of him you know, falling from his horse, and the next thing you'd know, he'd be, you know, setting astride his horse, getting out of the water. He fell off the horse. They know he got killed. So, but um, this is how it's done. It's just a modern day version of a serial where you know the, the you, you know, except this time you know that the guy people you like aren't going to make it. So, <laughs> don't get attached to the people in the roles, which is a reason why. That, like some of the people have said, the characters are bland and have no charisma to them. Because if you get attached to a character in a movie like this, you end up, um, it's just like, I remember... Um, I think Spider-Man's not coming back. Uh, people, <laughs> Spider-Man's not coming back. Or, um, uh, I was young, I, I got, I saw the, you know, I saw the Charge of the Light Brigade with Errol Flynn. And there's a lot of adults, you know, that really loved Errol Flynn action. And, and they and say, he's going to get killed. And he, that, you can't kill Errol Flynn, he's going to get killed. You know, because they've all read, you know, onward, ever, onward. And they know that he, you're charging through the cannons of Baklava in Crimea. And the cannons that are right, cannons to the left, cannons are wiping everybody out. But the problem was, is that, what it was really, uh, you know, I think what Kipling wrote, it was a real thing about it. They charged. Once a cavalry charge stops, nothing on earth can stop it. And by the time the cannons are leveled, they're no longer, it's like you got an automobile. You have to fire in front of everybody. And the cannons that are firing now are already hitting the back of the charge. So you couldn't stop the charge no matter what. But Errol Flynn dies in charge of life. And all these, all these women, and grown men, and Errol Flynn got killed. Well, God, yes, yeah, the charge of the Light Brigade. They knew he got killed. <laughs> they knew it was all about the whole thing. The guy basically... But part of it is they always want him to survive. Yeah, they want him to survive. If you make a whole bunch of characters that everybody loves, and they get killed, I know. God, it's like killing Bambi. They're like, ugh. You imagine if they killed Bambi and the, if the Walt Disney would have shot. It's it's never yet to have characters you don't like, and then they get killed, and then you cheer. Cheer, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our, 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 I sat in. Um, 
I, I sat in a movie theater with Richard Kyle, who played Jaws in a couple of James Bond movies. He's in the back of the theater with his family. We're sitting back there with him. And he became the good guy in this thing. And people, you know, that as Richard Kyle, and he's basically doing the good thing. Yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay, yeah, yay, the people. And he's sitting there crying. Because people, get them, get them, Jaws, get them. You know, do, you know Jaws, yay, and they're cheering. They're going like this. Because, you know, he was a big, likable, big lug, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though he was a bad guy to kill people, they still liked him and he survived. So, mm -hmm. you don't kill off people that you like unless you're doing combat and you kill everybody else. You know, but, um, but uh, it, it's it. This is, you know, like I said, if you want to waste $30, this is probably a better way to waste $30 than going to see the Apes movie. <laughs> no, because I... I this is a Canadian movie. They can call it anything they want. It's a Canadian movie. You mean like Conan the Barbarian is going to be Canadian? I know. It Actually, does. it's more like a sci-fi movie. It's a it's a sci-fi movie. It's all the actors are sci-fi. I recognize. I know. I go down. I see the faces on the screen. Then I go to the cast credit list. I recognize sci-fi act. Okay. Anything Barclay Hope is in, folks, is a cheap ass movie for the sci-fi channel. I know. It's just that feeling that you're watching a sci-fi movie that's on the big screen. They're all meant, okay. But this one is, this is, this has been a blockbuster franchise. Yeah. It's been over and over but and over they, again. But they go to where they can make it for the least amount of money because mm -hmm. uh, you think you could make this movie in the studio zone in Los Angeles and expect yeah, to No, because it's too expensive. It's too expensive. You know, and part of it is they do a lot of scenes in the dark. And yes, 3D is there, but it's not so... This is a movie that could have been in 3D or not in 3D. Yeah. It's, it's but more the 3D, and it just adds another layer. But they're they're doing it, the 3D, because they said they have, I think, one to five million regular visit, regular people who go see it. They will go see it in 2D and 3D, because mm -hmm. they want to do the comparisons, which means then they'll buy, they'll go see the movie two to three times. So if you if you do it in 2D and 3D, they go to see it. You like doubled your audience. You've doubled the audience with the same audience. They've got a captive audience. It's um, um, it's just you know like world ra worldwide wrestling has an audience. Mm -hmm. They only play to that audience. They get the same ratings every time. This will get. I remember the, the, the people doing the wrestling. <laughs>